Kathy Tadaldi and I'm at the Denham Springs Walker branch of the Livingston Parish Library. And today our curbside craft that we're going to talk about is this lovely little bleach bottle plant hanger. She looks a little uh, condescending, but, but we'll work on that. <laughs> uh, we took a bleach bottle and cut it and then we decorated it and put a plant in it and we got this really cute quirky little plant hanger. And that's what I'm going to show you how to make today. And, and you'll be able to pick up packets. Now your packet will have everything in it except the bottle. We're hoping that you have an empty bleach bottle at home. Or you can use other bottles. It doesn't have to be a bleach bottle. It can be an old laundry bottle, um, uh, an old dishwashing bottle. Just something that has the handle on it because that creates the nose. And we're going to cut it off above there. But that you can, you, know, you can look around and see if you've got a nice appropriate bottle that will make a good uh, plant hanger. So I'm going to show you how to get started with this. This is the bottle that I'm using, and it is a bleach bottle. And uh, first thing I want to do is take the label off so I can make a line for cutting. All right, got rid of that. And I'm going to cut it just above this line right here. Give us a little room. We want enough room to put to decorate her, and um, so I'm going to I'm going to use my very sharp knife. You can draw a line if you want to, but I think I'm just going to use this as my guideline and cut it about a half inch above that. And I'm going to stand up to, to give it my. Be careful if you're using a sharp. Now you probably could do this with scissors, but I'm going to get this started with my. Uh, oh yeah, nice and easy. And just go around very gently be careful of your fingers and I'm just keeping it about a half inch or so above that line it does not have to be perfect once the plants grows on top plant grows on top of it you're not going to see that anyway and we're back around to the front and there we are straighten that out a bit all right we're done with that knife all right, now, the only reason you might, you might have a use for that, I used it to stand up my plant whenever I was working on it. Make sure, if you're using a bleach bottle, to rinse it out really, really well, because you don't want bleach getting on anything, especially the plant. And I'm gonna use my, my all-purpose scissors here to straighten out that line in front just a little bit. All right, so there you have the bottom part of your of your hanger. Basically, you have your hanger now. Now, the couple things you need to do uh, before we decorate it, I um, brought my hot glue gun with me. Now, if you have a hot glue gun at home, it's perfect for this. If you don't have one, you can make your holes with a nail. I used, when I, whenever I used her, I didn't have my glue gun handy, so I used a nail and I put um, like a block of wood underneath it or, or your cutting board or something that you can hammer a nail into, and I there needs to be a hole at the bottom. You don't want to have to open it every time you want to drain your, your plant when you overwater it. Uh, besides, that's where her mouth is going to be. So you want to take your, um, I'm going to use the hot glue gun and just make a hole at the bottom for drainage. And it's hot enough if you just press it against the bottle, the heat will make, melt a little hole right in the bottom. There you go. Now the water can drain out that way. And yes, that was hot, just like hot glue. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to put another hole directly above that. There's actually a seam here, so that makes it easy. These are going to be the holes that hold the string that it hangs from. So I'm going to make another hole up here. We're going to make three of these holes. There we go. One, and then the other two are going to be on either side of her face. About there kind of make them equidistant, if at all possible. And the other one will be over here, above her other eyebrow. All right, now we've got our three holes made at the top that we're gonna hang her from. This one's a little scratchy in back. Let me get that out the way. Get that sharp piece out the way so it doesn't 
There we go. All right, so now you have the top of the jug, three holes and a hole for drainage. And she's gonna, this is gonna be her face. So now we are gonna decorate her face. We're gonna paint her face on. So we have googly eyes and uh, we have some, some Sharpies here that we're gonna use. I used paint, now when I made her, it was a learning experience, I used acrylic paint. And unfortunately, it doesn't hold, it keeps scratching off. I keep having to touch her up because the acrylic paint scratched off real easily, especially when it gets wet and it's outside in the weather. So I would prefer, I, we're gonna be sending Mar Sharpies home. I think you're gonna get a black one and a red one. I brought a couple other colors today, but if you have them at home, you can use Sharpies or if you actually have like um, enamel paint, like for models, you could use that on there because that's real weatherproof. So we are going to choose some googly eyes for her. I've got a couple of sizes here and, ooh, that's kind of little. Oh yeah, I like the bigger ones. Okay, we're gonna use the big ones and we'll put these over to the side. If you get sticky back googly eyes in your kit, um, that may work. If your bottle is curved, you, you might not get the sticky back to work very well. You might have to end up gluing it as well. And I, since I have the hot glue gun handy, if you don't have a hot glue gun, you can use, um, you can use uh, either super glue or even good old Elmer's to put the eyes on. So I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue right where I want her eye to be. There's one eye. And we're gonna put the other one over here in about the same spot. Eyes like to be symmetric. They just look really weird if they're not. And there's her eyes. Right now you can't tell if it's a he or a she. You know, you could make a he out of this if you wanted to. Our particular one is a lady. So we're going to draw some eyelashes on her and some eyebrows. And to draw her eyelashes, to draw her eyelids, we're gonna go, ooh, that's, it looks kind of bluish. It says black, but okay, we're just gonna go with it. And we're gonna put some little tiny ones down below. There's one eye. Boy, she looks surprised, doesn't she? And then we're gonna try and do the same thing over here. Not quite symmetric. Let's make these a little bit longer, see if we can match. Now, the beauty of doing it yourself is that you can embrace those imperfections. She does look very surprised. Let's see what happens if we color over part of her eye, make it look like an eye, make it look like she's got eyeshadow on. Oh yeah, that softens it up a bit. Okay, now she looks a little less surprised. <laughs> She's got blue eyeshadow on and blue mascara. Okay, there she is. Googly eyes, I like that. Now uh, we're gonna do her eyebrows. Let's see, we're just gonna try and Make nice shapely eyebrows for her. A little fatter in front. Now I know the rage now is really, really heavy eyebrows. So if you mess up, just make it fatter. All right, there's one eyebrow, maybe a little closer in. You know, a funny thing, I've often heard that artists unconsciously make their subjects look like themselves. So I'm thinking, how do my eyebrows look? <laughs> All right, there's one, and you're gonna start about the same place over here and make another one with a little arch to it. Or you could go humorous and make big, high eyebrows so that she really looks surprised. This is your project. You can make your lady funny or 
sad or scary. And a lot of that is all about the eyebrows. Like if you're carving a pumpkin, you know, if you make the eyebrows up high, they look surprised. If you make them pointing inward, they look angry. So you can play around with her eyebrows. She looks a little concerned. Hmm, hmm, let's see. All right, we're gonna end it with the eyebrows. You can play around with that. I actually have a pink Sharpie. I'm gonna make some little cheeks on her. You can put a little lipstick on yours, make some rouge if you want to. Got some purple on there by accident. Wasn't supposed to do that. Sorry, darling. There's one pink cheek. Pink cheeks like a doll baby. And now for her mouth, for her pretty little mouth. We're gonna, that's as tight as that goes. So we're gonna put her mouth right under her nose where mouths belong. And we're gonna make a smile. Yeah, she's getting a little personality to her here. There's her top lip. And then down here. Excuse the lines, we'll try and fill them in. Okay, got a little red lipstick on there. Marilyn Monroe taught, if I could think of her name, another actress of that genre, that the way to look sexy was to have your mouth just slightly open when they took your, when they took your picture, show a little bit of teeth, have your mouth open just a little bit. That was her signature smile. So, she's got that Marilyn Monroe smile going on. <laughs> Shelly Winters. She taught Shelly Winters that, that trick. <laughs> All right, now we've got a lady with a little personality there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is put her headdress, her, her, uh, her scarf on. And I used a t-shirt. This was a cotton t-shirt that I used. And I found there was a couple things wrong with it. When I watered the plant, if, if the water overflowed on top, the t-shirt got dirty with the, with the dirt and the mud. And then um, it didn't weather real well. So instead, we're going with some nice polyester ribbon that we're going to wrap around her head and put a great big bow in front. And once again, if you have a hot glue gun, that's fine. You can use it to hold it all in place. If not, you can just uh, tie it tightly and then maybe come back with a little, a little glue later or, or put some super glue underneath it. So I'm gonna tie a knot in front. it already. 
Oh, doesn't she look pretty with her bow all dressed up? That certainly does dress her up a lot. Now, if you have, let's put a little dot of hot glue on here to hold her bow up. Oops, almost out. If you have some old earrings, something that you are ready to get rid of, something that's, or if you can go to the Dollar Tree and just buy a pair that's nice and loud and brassy, you can dress her up even further by poking it through on the sides. Come on, lady, you want your earrings on, don't you? There we go. Oh yeah, I like that. All right, here we go again. One little hole. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like her. And now she's all ready for you to take her home, put some dirt in, and uh, find it. Now you can use any kind. This is a little tiny miniature wandering Jew. And I'm gonna tell you what happened last night just briefly, she had grown, her hair was all in her face, and so I brought her in the kitchen last night to give her a little hair trim, and I snipped just a three, literally three pieces off of the front, and the next time I looked at her, I mean five minutes later, I looked back, and every leaf, you see how they're all kind of going in different directions here? That's how they look. When I looked back at her, every single leaf was turned in the opposite direction like they were trying to run away from me. I promise you that happened everything and it wasn't the light the lighting but it was they were trying to run away from the torturer and I am, was so very sorry but I saved the other pieces and they're gonna make another plant so you could this is a little miniature wandering Jew you could even put an airplane plant you know a spider plant in it or um, or a Swedish ivy or anything that makes a nice hanging plant you can put inside of here it's got a drainage hole and uh, and oh to hang it now one more thing you may, I'm not sure, in your package you may have uh, a, a length of fishing line or you may have good old wrapping ribbon. This stuff is super strong and if you want to try making this at home without the kit and you don't have, uh, you can use gift wrap ribbon, but I also want to show you a trick. If you ever find yourself without string and you need string for a project, you want to tie something down in the back of the truck, you want to wrap up some yarn, whatever you want to do, you can take an old squished throwaway Christmas bow, take the uh, staple out, take the backing off and take the staple out. Well, I promise you that staple came out easier last night. It all, doesn't it always? Um, there we go. There it comes. Okay, you take the staple out of that, and you have got about four feet of the strongest thing known to man, short of dried oatmeal. <laughs> and that is some kind of strong, let me tell you. I don't know what the tensile strength is of this stuff, but you can strip it. And it goes right down in a nice even line and there you have a little piece you have two pieces uh, I actually that's what I have hung her with that's red ribbon from uh, an old bow <laughs> and uh, you can you can do it in smaller strips I told my son about it last night I said look it gets so little you could actually use it as dental floss and he said give it to me and he did <laughs> this stuff is super strong so you can use that to hang your your doll baby I'm going to use the yellow because it matches her so nicely. But if you don't have any, you can just use an old bow. Works wonderfully for all kind, of, all kind of stuff. I'm so cheap. I recycle everything. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is just poke it through the hole. Got to move her little hairband out the way for that. Just for a second, we're going to put it right back. Okay, and. Um, Okay, I want this to be about yay long. So I'm gonna cut it right there. And I'm just gonna do an overhand knot right here for this piece.
we can trim the string off later. And then the other side, I might should have done this before I decorated her with her earrings and everything. Look it through the hole. Can't do an open end knot here, clearly, because I don't have access to the other end of that string. But you can just tie a, a good square knot or a granny knot or whatever. Let me tell you, this stuff is it's strong. <laughs> and once you tie that knot, have you ever tried to untie a package that's been tied with this stuff without scissors? It's pretty tough. Okay, so now I want another piece about that same length for the back. Make it a little longer for the knots. Put it through the hole and back. Come on, you. Well, that's the one I had to catch on, huh? There we go. Do the old overhand knot routine. Over a finger knot. <laughs> that nice and tight. You can trim it later. Now, what you want to do, get it all nice and even in front. You don't really have to make it that long. Depends on where you're going to hang it from. But you're going to tie these knots all together. There you go. If you want to just make sure this is, this is not going to go anywhere, but I sometimes like to just anchor it down at the bottom before I trim the knot off. All right, get rid of that. Get rid of this excess down here. She is ready to go. She's ready to have a plant put in her. How about that? I like her. And you can trim this or make another bow out of it. You know, just trim your trim your ribbon to suit you. Boy, she's sassy looking. I like that. Have fun with it and find a good plant to put in it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy all of our curbside crafts, so stay safe and stay happy and remember to keep reading.